We start with Senate Republican leader Steve Orojo. Senator, welcome to Reporters Roundtable. Colleen, thank you very much for having me. Senator, we're less than a month into the new session, and you are the new leader of your party in the Senate. What are your priorities for the next two years? Well, Colleen, first of all, thanks for having me. And, and the priorities, uh, as the uh, Republicans, both in the Senate and the Assembly, have been talking about uh, for years, as the number one issue is affordability. Uh, we were glad to hear that the governor mentioned it, the uh, new Senate president mentioned it, the speaker mentioned it. It seems like everybody was mentioning it. And um, quite frankly, we've given a number of um, uh, ideas. Uh, from, they used some of them already. The idea of a special uh, education funding at the state level. I know that was a major priority of uh, Senate President Steve Sweeney. He made a big push for it. Uh, it was something that the Republicans had discussed uh, probably five, six years ago. And then uh, also just recently, uh, a bill was passed out of committee in the Senate um, giving the what's referred to as the energy tax receipts back to the municipalities and making that money directly related to reducing property taxes. That's something that the Republicans have talked about for a long time. It's, that's a little bit in the weeds, but it's a lot of money. Yeah, well, I mean, it's been how long? 15 years, maybe longer, since that money has been increased to municipalities, right? It's been a long Correct. time. Correct. Correct. Right. Under, under, what's referred to, under what's referred to as the Comptra aid, um, there's a whole host of um, formulas there. But the, the bottom line is uh, the state has been taking the money that should be rightly in, in the municipality's hands. Um, and the Re Republicans had a bill for many times giving that back. Uh, we also made some uh, amendments to say, listen, it must be used to reduce property taxes, not for increased spending, but reduce property taxes. Now, you just mentioned the words, give it back. Um, on Thursday, you announced an effort that you're calling give it back, uh, calling attention to a number of Governor Murphy's policies that Republicans don't like. Uh, talk about your motivation for that. Are you hoping that this is going to help the GOP win more seats in 2023? Uh, ab absolutely. Plus, the, the main thing, Colleen, is the fact that obviously we have um, you know two years, um, essentially, until 2023. Um, until the election, but um, at, the, at the same time, if you recall last year, uh, the, the Murphy administration had made a number of um, mis, you know, calculations as far as how much revenue was coming in. They, they borrowed money that obviously wasn't, wasn't necessary. And this year, the same thing is happening with respect to the additional revenue that's coming in higher than what had been forecasted, probably to the tune of about $3 billion at uh, former treasurers and economists have said that based upon the current trends, it's probably what the administration is looking at, about, about $3 billion more than, and, than what was uh, expected. So uh, the first thing we started talking about is that, hey, listen, if the easiest thing is, you know, call for the administration to give that revenue back in the form of, you know, tax reductions. And then we started thinking, said, you know, that give it back is something that we've been asking for for a long time. First of all, the whole idea of uh, the voice of the people. The governor has, um, uh, you know, governed by executive order, uh, one man, one person rule for the past uh, two years now. Uh, so the whole idea of giving the, the people's uh, the voice of the people back in the legis legislature, if you remember last year, the Republicans have asked a number of times for the legislature, a co-equal branch of government, to uh, limit the governor's power, where at least the governor has to come and talk to the legislature and negotiate some of these uh, executive order issues. The idea of giving parents back their, you know, parental parental rights. Uh, the idea of giving, you know, vaccine choice back. The idea of economic freedom. The lockdowns. There's a number of studies out there right now. One from a very, you know, prominent institution, John Hopkins Uni uh, University, that said that. Um, you know that you know the lockdowns uh, did not did not help. Um, it was only like two tenths of one percent on the mortality rate, and then also the idea of giving back safe streets. So the whole idea of giving back to the power to the people, not just one person rule. Yeah, yeah, and to just kind of stick with that, so you're co-sponsoring Senator O'Scanlan's bill that seeks to limit the governor's emergency powers, and you have a Democratic co-sponsor in Vin Gopal. Uh, there was a similar move that fell short in the last session. What do you think is going to be different this time? 
Well, I hope, you know, Colleen, there, the last time, and you mentioned in the last session, the Senate Republicans and probably the Assembly Republicans did it at least uh, four or five times, made a motion of the day to bring a bill up that would limit the governor's powers and at least uh, make the, uh, you know, engage the legislature in these in these discussions and these decisions. And unfortunately, every time the uh, Democrat Party had tabled it, and once they tabled it, they um, uh, it stopped as a discussion. Interesting enough, uh, some of the some of the Democrats in the Senate didn't vote to table the bill at that time because I think uh, there's there's COVID exhaustion, there's executive order exhaustion, and I do think that um, you'll start to see some of the uh, Democrats as well say that hey, listen. We're a co-equal branch of government. They should be saying it right now. They should have been saying it last year that we're a co-equal branch of government and we need to be in, in the game, not on the sidelines. Right. So now for the first time in a dozen years, there's new leadership in both parties in the Senate, not just you, but also on the Democratic side with Senate President Scutari. Now, he said he wants to work in a bipartisan manner, but that's something we hear a lot from politicians. Do you think things may be different this session? Well, Colleen, I've always tried to work in a bipartisan. Listen, if you're a minority to get things done, you have to be able to have influence and try and, um, you know, negotiate. We got, to, you know, in the minority party, you have to negotiate everything. We're hopefully with the message that was went and the seats that we picked up, we obviously have, you know, uh, additional uh, influence, uh, which should help the negotiating uh, issues. But I've had a number of discussions with Senator Skatari. We have a good relationship. And um, listen, I, I, you know, it's, we always hear about uh, a lot of, you know, you know, fighting and the parties against each other. There's actually um, a lot of things that have to get done. Listen, we're all going to have our, our difference in principles, we're different ideas. Um, how we treat each other is, is, is critically important. And uh, listen, I, Senator Skatari and I have had many, many conversations. We have dinner together and uh, we don't always agree on everything. But uh, he's uh, he's a professional, and that's the way we're gonna that's we're gonna you know treat it. And I consider him a friend, as I I consider uh, Senator Sweeney a friend. We're all New Jerseyans first, and I'm a Christian first too. Yeah, I don't I don't think we've seen the kind of rancor in Trenton that we've seen in in Washington so far. Um, uh, Governor Murphy renom uh, excuse me nominated Matt Placken, his former chief counsel, to be Attorney General on Thursday. What are your thoughts on that? Well, obviously, Matt's a, a, a very smart. I've, I've dealt with uh, Matt Plack in, in the past. Uh, Matt's obviously a very um, talented, uh, smart individual, uh, but it, he's got to go before the Judiciary Committee. There's going to be, and we have members on, obviously, on the Republican side, four members that um, will give it a, a good review. Uh, there are some, you know, significant issues that were during. Um, Matt's time, obviously, you have the the Katie Brennan, uh, you know, situation. You have the um, you know all the executive orders that were put in place while you know while while Matt was there, and Matt probably wrote a lot of them. So there's a, a significant number of issues that have to be um, you know vetted, and I'm going to leave it up to our members on the Judiciary Committee, and I think they'll do a very thorough job. Um, but obviously, Matt's a, a smart individual, but it certainly needs to be reviewed, uh, especially with these very significant issues that occurred uh, while Matt was there. You know, Senator, I wish we could talk some more. But we're out of time uh, for now. Thank you so much for being with us. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks, Colleen.